Hello there, ghost story nerds like me. Uh, it's I've been wanting to do this video for a long time uh, because there's a lot of fun stuff going on over at the whatsyourghoststory.com website. And I know there's not been too much going on here on YouTube. I do have some bigger plans even uh, immediately. However, I wanted to do this video first to check in, say hi, and let you guys know what's coming up. Yeah, I can say it every time because it's always true. I am so far behind on editing. I have shot so many interesting videos at different locations across the country and just finding the time to to edit those and put them up, it's uh, it's been difficult to do. Uh, part of that is uh, good news uh, because I have a wonderful job with the International Screenwriters Association and I am their video editor there, so I am editing constantly with them and it's kind of, uh, it's draining a little bit. Um, and you'll see some of the stuff behind me. Uh, we just did a video about the Dark Knight, uh, hence all the awesome Batman stuff. And in case anybody is interested in screenwriting or filmmaking or just movies in general, I'll put a link to that video in this video description. And that actually is a good segue because whatsyourghoststory.com is my website where I talk about ghost stories primarily. First and foremost, it's uh, strange history, macabre history. Uh, but I know that there is some overlap between uh, movies and horror movies specifically and ghost stories obviously. So every so often I will do a, uh, a story on my page about a ghost story movie, about a horror movie. I did an article and video about the movie Scream that came out recently where I took a look back at the original screenplay back from 1996, uh, which ended up being an awesome screenplay. <laughs> but also I wanted to mention, in case you didn't know, I have a podcast called the Fantastic Story Society uh, conducted with a really good friend of mine, one of my best friends, Max Tim. He is another Midwest native Grew up in a haunted house. We both love ghost stories and we're both creative people. So uh, we both come from different places. I am an onset filmmaker, whereas Max is really uh, more on the writing and development side. Uh, and then together we interview people that are creative in the world of the paranormal and, and the spooky or the weird and strange. And that podcast has been a lot of fun. And it's not always weird and strange. I mean, we had one of my comedy heroes, Jonathan Katz, who was Dr. Katz, professional therapist. He was our first uh, stand-up comedian guest. But we will do probably uh, once a year, have a comedy night to mix things up because it can get a little bit dark every so often. We did have a, a serial killer expert on, uh, Harold Schechter. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning all of this is because these podcasts, which exist in uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, iTunes, all the typical podcast listening locations, uh, it is going to come to YouTube also. And actually, we have an episode out, and actually, you may have seen it because I released our year in preview episode on our YouTube page uh, in January. But I'm going to go back and put the backlog of all of our episodes up. I'll probably do one or two a month until I'm caught up. We really only have about two dozen episodes, so it's not going to be super overwhelming. We want to do the best episodes possible. Hopefully stuff that you guys are really into. Let us know if you have any, any requests. Going over just a couple of the highlights and really we're very proud of all the episodes we've uh, put out, but uh, Jeff Belanger, who a lot of you may know, he was actually our very first guest and a perfect way to kick off the series. Carl Pfeiffer, who you know from Hellier, uh, Christopher St. Booth, Amelia Cotter, a very recognizable name from the Chicago and Maryland areas when it comes to ghost storytelling. Uh, DJ McHale, very good friend of mine, uh, the creator of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I was very excited that I was able to talk with John Ronson, who wrote The Men Who Stare at Goats and so many other great books. Uh, Kathy Kressel from Rockford. T. Krulos, who you might know from T's Week in Weird, which is a really awesome Facebook group. Uh, but also he's written a number of books about conspiracy theories and just other oddities in the world. Uh, very connected with Milwaukee area ghost stories. Lopaka Kapanui, who was the consultant on Finding Ohana, that Netflix series. Uh, we talk about some Hawaiian ghost stories. Carlos Elizraki, who you might know as uh, Officer Garcia from Reno 911. He made a, a zombie movie, so we did a zombie episode with him. Lisa Van Buskirk, uh, we did a ghost hunting on location episode during the pandemic at a haunted restaurant in Madison. David Ferrier, who is in that kind of same world as John Ronson writing about oddities and conspiracy theory. Uh, he is the guy that is the star of the Netflix series Dark Tourist. We had a lot of fun talking with Rob Davia, who is behind so many of our favorite board games. Um, maybe you are aware of Betrayal at the House on the Hill, Betrayal Legacy, Pandemic Legacy, um, and Risk Legacy. There's just so many of our favorite games this guy created. And just recently we had Joe Posnanski on who uh, wrote this amazing book on Harry Houdini. And also he's mostly known as a baseball and sports journalist. 
Uh, so he's a very diverse writer. Now let's go and talk about what's going on over at whatsyourghoststory.com. I'm gonna go way back in time because there's some great articles, if I, if I do say so myself, that maybe you would find interesting. For about half a year, I did a weekly live stream on Facebook and then edited those videos, the live stream videos, put them on YouTube, and then we made a uh, post for it on the What's Your Ghost Story page. Anybody that was watching those live videos, really, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, very time consuming, very, very time consuming, but it was still a lot of fun being able to tell ghost stories and connect with everybody while we were all you know, in lockdown. Uh, so let's move forward a little bit from there. This might not seem super topical, but the uh, in December 21st, that's the winter solstice, I did a speech on uh, winter solstice legends and lore. And then I turn it into a video and a blog post as well. I think that's really a fascinating thing to see how different cultures have observed the darkest day of the year throughout time and around the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, shedding new light on old crimes in January of 2021. We take a look at a couple of really fascinating stories throughout time. We tie it in with The Irishman, which was a big movie on Netflix at the time about Jimmy Hoffa, of course. At the same time, one of the Zodiac Killer's codes was cracked. Um, and I think another one happened pretty recently too. So this is constantly relevant. And then this fascinating story from the early 1900s that I think people just cracked this mysterious case. Even though it's over 100 years old, we finally now know a lot more about it. Absolutely worth a look. Um, and yeah, we are going all the way back to the 1620s uh, because if you know me well, you know that I'm really into archaeology and that there are still clues and evidence remaining from a whole bunch of different aspects of history. And a site of a mass murder that took place in the 1620s is now a huge archaeological site. A lot of a lot is being learned about this very unusual uh, crime that took place on Beacon Island. And as you see here, I began to do this thing Again, it was connected largely to the fact that we were locked down. A lot of us were at home a lot. There wasn't as much going on as far as social activities. So I thought, hey, it might be interesting to highlight what is coming out on streaming each month for fans of the, the horror genre and the paranormal in general. So you see here, I did one in January and then looking ahead to February. I did this every month for a while. I stopped doing it because we do have more things to do in the world now. We can go to movie theaters. We can go out and, and publicly safely gather a lot more than we could back then. Also, it was unbelievably time consuming. It was, a, I thought, a fun idea, an interesting and a good idea, but wow, it was really tough. It took a lot of time to make these articles, which had such an expiration date. They're not relevant for very long. So that's why I stopped doing them. If there's a request, I might pick it up again, uh, but I don't really have plans currently right now. So of course you see here, my experience leading tours to the Cecil Hotel uh, with mentioning Elisa Lam, the Night Soccer, and Jack Unterweger. Uh, I always say when I was giving my tours in LA, possibly the only apartment building, uh, the only hotel that was home based to two different serial killers through the years. Uh, this was around the time that there were so many documentaries coming out and so many specials and stories about the Cecil Hotel, even though this is a location that I had been featuring for a long time on my tours in Los Angeles. Oh, and by the way, my tours in Los Angeles are going again, uh, now part of the banner of American Ghost Walks. Uh, so check out AmericanGhostWalks.com and you could do our Hollywood tour. We will be opening up more tours around LA, but for right now, just downtown Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard. But you can see on this article, I do talk about taking people to the Cecil Hotel, what that was like, the amazing stories, the weird stories that came out of actually doing that. I did a video as well, kind of talking to camera about about going to the Cecil Hotel a couple of times a week uh, for years when I was giving that tour. Call for info. I had somebody reach out to me about the Fleur de Lis Hotel uh, apartment, I should say, in Hollywood. So I'm just carrying that on out there into the world. If anybody has any information on that haunted location, uh, possibly haunted location, I should say, I encourage us to continue to work as a community to share our own stories and to ask questions and just open it up to anybody that wants to talk about haunted locations. The biggest service I can offer is just providing a platform for people to interact with one another. Now, I hate that you have to be a registered uh, WordPress user. You have to have your own login. That has nothing to do with my site. It's a WordPress thing. Uh, and I can have that open for anybody, even outsiders, even um, guests, I guess you would say. But the second I do that, it gets just spammed so hard with people trying to sell Oakleys and it's just bots filling up the comments. And that's very annoying. And um, that's why you actually have to be a logged in person. You aren't logging in through me, it's through WordPress. So if you log in 
you could comment on anybody that has a WordPress website. And obviously there's a whole bunch of them out there. So that's why, unfortunately, you do have to be logged in in order to uh, post a comment. Uh, oh yes, in March, uh, this is something that we've been doing for quite a long time, but I finally decided to sit down and write it out. If you are a Ghost Adventures fan, which we are fans, I am fan, a fan, I'll, I'll speak for myself. We created a, a drinking game uh, that you could uh, participate watching uh, ghost adventures and playing this game and and there's there's sober versions too you can make it eating candy you can make it doing exercises if you want to be super healthy uh but if there's a link here to download uh, a free pdf so that you can play along it takes it to the store click on the download button and then there you have it here's the rules drink when this happens drink when this happens uh, just a fun, silly way to enjoy Ghost Adventures even further. Okay, so here's the first installment of a new series, Bucket List Locations. Now, if you go all the way to the top of the page, you'll see Paranormal Bucket List. And maybe this came out of the fact, well, for one, this is an idea I had a long time ago. Um, but I think it really came to be because, again, we couldn't travel. I'm used to traveling constantly for work, going to different festivals, uh, both paranormal conferences and film festivals from coast to coast. And I haven't done that very much uh, at all since the pandemic. But if you click on paranormal bucket list, it takes you to this page. And these are places that I want to see. I want to investigate ideally um, at some point in my life. I've got it broken down to locations within the United States, international locations, and what I'm calling unfinished business. These are places that I've been uh, maybe I've even been many times, but I still have questions and I still want to do further investigations. And you'll see that, oh, and a mission accomplished list. Been there, done that. I've really covered it well. Even that said, I do still owe you all a video on Stull Cemetery and the Queen Mary. Some of these places are just listed in here because I still have to come back and write articles about them. Uh, but that list, this list is going to continue to grow. I'm never going to have this page finished. It's going to be a constantly evolving and changing and updating list. Okay, so let's go back and pick up where we left off. Okay, so paranormal news. In March of 2021 is when Ronald DeFeo Jr. passed away. He is known as the Amityville Killer, uh, the person who murdered his whole family. When he passed away, I thought it was kind of interesting news to do a little article on just, you know, looking back at the Amityville killings. If you commonly go to paranormal conferences, you might know a guy named Christopher Quarantino. He was part of the family, I think the youngest member of the family that moved into the Amityville house after the killings. His take on everything is different from what I've heard anywhere else. People usually say that, well, the house isn't haunted today. That means everybody was making up what happened before. Uh, Chris Quarantino has a different take on it, and it's a take that nobody else can have because he lived there, and he got to experience the paranormal horrors for himself um, unfortunately, as a child, and it is very much connected to his uh, parents, specifically George Lutz, who apparently was doing some bad stuff, uh, some dark magic type stuff. And the paranormal phenomenon was really associated with that, not the killings. It was all focused around him. And even though they moved out of the house and next people that moved into the house didn't have anything paranormal happening, they continued to have paranormal goings on with them because it was not associated with anything other than George Lutz, his stepdad. So it's an interesting take, and I wanted to write that article uh, based on that, but the more I dug into the actual murders and what Ronald DeFeo was doing at the time of the deaths and immediately afterwards, it really made me think that this is a bigger story than we've ever been told. Check it out because there are so many questions that come up that we may never get the answer to. Maybe now that he's passed away, some people will begin to talk. Maybe there's enough time that other people that are associated with it might start to talk. But it really does seem like there may have been some sort of a, a mafia message. And I know that sounds like it's, uh, like I'm spitting conspiracy theories. But just check out the article. It's a wild one. And I thought I was discovering new stuff. I, I was creating new hypotheses. And then I do some more research and find out there's a lot of people talking about this out there. Uh, but just not in the paranormal world. It's a big mystery, and I would love to see that turned into a maybe the next true crime documentary on Netflix. It seems like there's something here worth looking into. Oh, wow. And here I am. I cannot believe I haven't written part two of this. I had a good friend, actually Lisa Van Buskirk, the Madison area tour guide. She went out to L.A. and said, hey, what should I do while I'm in L.A.? And I my head exploded because there's a billion things to do. And if you only have a couple of days, how do you organize it? And so then I created this uh, series um, called if I have a few days in LA, what should I do? And I, I've broken it down and I plotted it out into a several five or six part series. Uh, we will be talking about interesting points of interest you should check out, 
as well as obviously the haunted places and what their ghost stories are. I am way overdue to do a part two, uh, but part one, as you see, is up from last April. Also in April, um, our friend Iris showed us that there is a, a very unusual mystery in downtown Madison, which is some graffiti that was allegedly left behind by Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, it is at the Boss Meadery, again, right in downtown Madison, Wisconsin. And the interesting thing is, and it's even dated. So if this is authentic, and if the date is also authentic, this would have been written by Jeffrey Dahmer after his first victim and before his second victim. So when he was just getting started up. And so I kind of look at the possibilities of how this could be authentic, how it would make sense. Now, we don't know for sure if Jeffrey Dahmer was ever in Madison. He's from Milwaukee. It's not that far away. It stands for reason it's possible he was here and working at this location back when it was a bakery. Um, so if anybody has any more information on that, definitely let us know. We would love to try to solve that mystery. Anytime you see something like this on the right-hand side here, uh, that is a podcast episode. So here you see us talking about haunted baseball. Mickey Bradley and Dan Gordon, two awesome guys. We have so much fun. Anytime I get a chance to talk to them, and I've interviewed them a few times now, really fun people. And even if you're not into baseball, I think you'll enjoy this podcast. If you're not into ghost stories, I think you'll still enjoy this podcast because it, it really hits baseball and ghost stories equally well. And if you like both of them like I do, then you're in seventh heaven. Um, this is an interesting uh, location here in Whitewater, uh, Wisconsin, the Witch's Tower. Now, this is a location that has a lot of legends about it. And as you see, there's even a beer based on the legends uh, that there's a lot of witchcraft in the area. I want to do a lot more research into the, the um, Whitewater area of Wisconsin because there is a long connection with spiritualism. And of course, outsiders who just view spiritualism or anything a little bit different like that as witchcraft, um, it's led to so many legends. And one of them is based around the water tower nearby. And it's just, it's just an old spooky looking water tower. I've heard that Beloit has a similar looking water tower that also has some legends behind it, which I need to look into further. I have not yet checked out the Beloit water tower. So the great thing about all of what we do is that it's so interactive, whether you're finding me on Twitter, finding me on uh, YouTube, or sending me messages through the site. First-hand accounts, whether you're helping so explain some gap in knowledge I have on the history of a location, or sharing a first-hand experience, or even just sharing, hey, this is the legend that we're telling now at this location. Uh, that's what this follow-up on the LA Cathedral High School um, is about. And this is a school that I always love when a school, especially, can talk about and share their own macabre history. I always talk about how Yuma High School at one point in time was established in an old Wild West prison, and now it's got a new uh, building, but they're still known as the criminals. Their school logo has literally a ball and chain on it, but LA Cathedral High School was built on top of one of the early cemeteries, and there are signs of that throughout the building, including uh, parts of headstones that are used as decor. I think it's actually done in a fairly respectful way. Um, however, yes, uh, bodies have continued to be found there, and wouldn't you know it, they just went ahead and leaned into it, and they are the Phantoms. That is their school mascot, as you see right there. There's their logo. I take a little look back at The Conjuring 3. Actually, at this point, it was a look ahead to The Conjuring 3, which was coming out, the actual case that's connected to it. And in case you didn't know, that story was already first made into a movie back in 1983, starring the likes of a very, very young Kevin Bacon and Cloris Leachman, and none other than Andy Griffith. And if you go here on the site, we have the movie right here for you to watch. I love it anytime I can do a ghost or paranormal or spooky themed road trip uh, with, and I do an accompanying article for it. I need to do videos for them as well. So this was a recent trip out to Arizona, which was a road trip. And we stopped in Corona, New Mexico, which at the time didn't realize that that's actually where uh, Roswell happened. And we always think of Roswell, the town, being where the crash took place. But actually, as Stanton Freeman points out in the name of his book, The Crash at Corona, that was the closest town to where the crash actually happened. The first reports uh, were phoned in to the military from the town of Corona. We went through uh, White Sands Missile Testing Range in Almogordo, New Mexico, which has all sorts of UFO and conspiracy theory lore about it. A little bit creepy to be around there, to be quite honest. Uh, as you see right here, uh, when flashing closed ahead, and if they're testing missiles, you're okay with taking a one-hour delay. So we take a look at some of the famous moments throughout time that took place there, uh, including Operation Paperclip, Project Blue Book. Um, this is a place where the space shuttle 
landed, as you see here. Space Shuttle Challenger in 1982 landed there. And, of course, we have UFO uh, sightings included in this area as well. Um, and then much less macabre, uh, but a really fun location, the Horseshoe Cafe in Benson, Arizona. We, do, we have a write-up about this very haunted location. Um, it's not incredibly old, like as you see here, 1937, but it is full of artifacts and uh, antiques. And for whatever reason, it just seems to be a very, very active place the, to the extent that when you ask a waitstaff, a member of the waitstaff, hey, is this place haunted? They just start laughing like, where do I start to tell you what how haunted this place is? The owner of the Horseshoe Cafe is an absolute character, and I say that in the best way. She has so much personality, and she will take the time and, and share with you her ghost stories. And yes, they have UFO sightings in this area as well. Oh, and then a very, very different type of location. I was just saying it was a very different location, but at the same time, it's not. Uh, I was just talking about L.A. Cathedral High School having being built on top of a cemetery. Well, in the town of Vail, Arizona, there is a school that has a pioneer cemetery, actually a children's pioneer cemetery on the premises. I can't imagine being a kid and going to a school knowing that there's a whole bunch of kids buried out back. And, um, and so we, we did check this area out. It is... Off limits, so we didn't trespass. We got as close as we legally could. You'll see that there's fences between us and the photos because uh, it is school grounds. We don't want to be busted breaking into a school. Uh, but, yeah, you see the, the the crosses there. And as you see, this, this cemetery came to be as a result of a smallpox outbreak. Uh, still a very interesting historical location. And on a much lighter note, uh, you know, if you're in the area and want some themed food, there's a place in Vail called Serial Gorillers, which is an awesome name for a pub, a very horror movie themed location. We did our first paranormal conference in a long time, heading up to Duluth uh, for the Minnesota Paracon. Uh, so I kind of recap that as well. Uh, bucket list location, the Preston School of Industry up in Ione, California, which is kind of a Bay Area, uh, Northern California location. Uh, still a very fascinating location. Um, Another series that I started, I have to do another one, and I've got the content for it. I just have to post it, Ghost Hunting 201. So we all know the basics. If you watch ghost hunting shows, you know the very basics of ghost hunting. And I am not a big-time ghost hunter, but over the years, I've developed um, some different concepts and theories and ideas of my own. And I ended up giving that presentation, Ghost Hunting 201, at a conference in uh, Long Beach, Long Beach, California, a couple years back. And I just thought... Well, this is an interesting way to dive into some more complex ideas, sometimes more philosophical, sometimes a different methodology altogether. So here's a question that was asked a number of times uh, through the years, and it came up a lot during the paranormal conference. So I thought, well, no better place to start than here. Do we actually have to ask our EVP questions out loud when we're doing EVP sessions? And I take a philosophical look at that in this article, um, giving my opinions on that matter. Another follow-up on Bot Amityville. Something fun that we discovered last year is that my episodes of a, a TV show that's a spinoff of Mysteries at the Museum, which was called Monumental Mysteries, and then they changed it to Mysteries at the Monument, and I don't know if it has a whole different name now. Uh, my episodes are online now. So one of those articles was about Snippy, the alien mu mutilated horse. Uh, crazy story that I was able to tell on that show, but I decided to do a follow-up article here. There's a lot of oddities about it. The best thing you could possibly do is go there today, because back in the day when this happened, we didn't have a lot of instrumentation, but now today we can go back and see, hey, is there any uh, uh, radiation left behind? If, if really a UFO came down and did weird stuff in this area, uh, can we measure it in any discernible way now? And as you see here, in October, I began to do New to Theaters, which is a lot quicker and easier for me to do. Uh, but it was also nice that we could talk about movies that are in theaters, not just what's coming to streaming. That's something I might continue here or there. I actually do want to do a 2021 recap of the um, the year in horror. I haven't written that one yet, but that's something I want to do. Two figures that are, well, one is a lot associated with the paranormal. <clears throat> the other, not at all. Mickey Cohen and Harry Houdini are two historical figures that I am absolutely fascinated with. And the more I've been researching the two of them, the more strange links I find between the two. Not literal, mostly in, this, in terms of their personality, their impact on pop culture, and their impact on the world and news at the times of their uh, being alive. My amazing wife and I did an interview with Greg Cause. Thank you again, Greg, for interviewing us, uh, telling some ghost stories. And so I just decided to share that here as well with time codes in case there's any specific location or story you want to hear. 
I always love telling stories. Uh, I'm happy to conduct interviews. I'm happy to be interviewed. And anytime I can do it with my wife makes me extra happy. Okay, and then something really wild. As you see in October, there's a location in Lake County, Illinois, that began having uh, brand new ghost sightings. Woman in historic clothing, as you see here, um, not that that's a photo, but it's a decent representation, has been seen walking in the area of a place that has never been developed before. So not only is this woman seen in this location that had never been developed, been seen on a couple of occasions by numerous people, it's already interesting and unique, and um, you, you wonder what the history of that land is, what she had, what, what an association. But while she is seen, there are bats swarming overhead of her as she's walking around. So my guess, in the most logical sense, is just that for whatever reason, the animals are picking up on this. Not that she's manifesting the bats or she's a witch or anything like that, but that you know, animals do react to the paranormal, and for whatever reason, bats seem to be escorting this woman around as she walks the grounds, walks down the street of this suburban area in Lake County, Illinois. Wild, wild story. And uh, I hope we get more sightings and more information soon. Some of you may know I also used to do a series called A Ghost Hunter Watches where I watch something uh, that has a connection to a ghost story, whether it's a true story or not, usually they are. And I do kind of a reaction video well, I was happy this last year I got to do Family Guy <laughs> because uh, Family Guy had a ghost hunting episode. And so I take a look at moments from the show and comment on it. It was a lot of fun. Posted that this past October. Uh, if, you're, if you guys are a fan of comedy and ghost stories, I would check that out. A bucket list location. If you guys are fans of Jeff Mudgett and uh, the book Blood Saints and Devil in the White City and H.H. Holmes, there is the possibility, if not likelihood, that... Before he came to Chicago, H.H. H. Holmes built basically the murder castle, built another version of the murder castle in this small town, uh, Port Costa, California. I coincidentally was in Port Costa looking at an old school that had ghost stories associated with it. I didn't know about this connection till years later, which is really a shame because I would have loved to check this out. The building is very, very similar. As you see, this corner here matches up with this corner here. Storefronts on the bottom, apartments up top, very similar building, you know, difference of materials based on the location, based on the weather needs. And this location, I believe, does have some ghost stories associated with it, but I'm wondering if you were to really investigate close, would you be able to find secret passageways, other things that H.H. H. Holmes had built into the murder castle in Chicago? Definitely a bucket list location I want to check out. Uh, when I was in Los Angeles recently, I was able to check out a whole bunch of locations on my tour and I was very excited to go back to a location that was not on my tour it was actually on our haunted Houdini tour that we did uh, one weekend only and this is a place where Harry Houdini had what might be his only ever paranormal experience uh, as you might know Houdini was really really into debunking mediums and spiritualists uh, fraudsters really uh, but something happened to him at this location on camera that uh, he was never able to explain so check out this video here if you haven't already. I, th I think it's a really fascinating story. Short video, too. Unique, lately I've been able to use Zillow, the, the real estate and home buying website, for information on some of these articles. Uh, here we talk about how Zach Baggins ab abandoned his plans for the La Bianca Manson murder house. This is a location in a very affluent neighborhood in Los Angeles. Zach bought the house. I was assuming to do another demon house type of documentary. He sold it about a year and a half later. We, we talk about that there. And here's the book cover for Joe Posnanski's Harry Houdini and the Afterlife. Amazing book. Bucket list location connected to Griffith Park in Los Angeles. And as you see, I did a small two-part series just recently uh, here and here about YouTube comments. Uh, unusual conversations that have come from them. And also, this is a big and important one here on February 22nd. You know, What's Your Ghost Story started out as a site back in 1999. My internet host stopped doing hosting. They, they shifted to other technical stuff. And um, so I was able to get my entire um, website on a data DVD. It was unfortunate because it's, it was a huge website. I mean, thousands and thousands of pages of information. So I began to rebuild that site on a, through a company called blog.com, I think it was. And then I got really deep into it. And then that company just went out of business and everything was lost, which was so disheartening. And it's been difficult for me to want to get going again because it's such a huge mountain to climb. But I realized I didn't have any stories on here about the gate in Libertyville 
or Cuba Road, the house on Rainbow Road, all the activity in that area. Those were huge parts of my previous sites. And the fact that I don't have that represented on this site at all is a huge shortcoming on my part. So I'm going to prioritize trying to get some of those old articles back up here. Uh, stuff, again, dating back into the 1990s. And then you see here another updated uh, bucket list location, the Los Feliz Murder Home. Uh, another one that Zillow was able to help me out on because there's some new information on that location. So a, a recap on a couple of aspects of the site and of the YouTube channel that you know that you need to know about. One, the podcast is coming to the YouTube channel, so expect an episode or two a week until I'm caught up on that one. Paranormal bucket list locations, I'm going to keep doing those articles. And if you guys have any suggestions, I do want to know what you think are places you must see before you die. For Ghost Hunting 201, the next article will be about the Estes Method, which is kind of a... Uh, a joining of spirit box communication and EVP, I guess you could say. Uh, but there's still a couple of different schools of thought on how to do it, the right way to do it, what the right philosophy is. And we don't know. I mean, philosophy, there's not ever a right or wrong. There's just presenting ideas. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, we did the Estes Method as part of a big paranormal event. Uh, I was in Milwaukee at this crazy and beautiful old Victorian era mansion. Um, so... There's uh, a lot to talk about with that one, but I'm looking forward to releasing that. And something else I want to do, I have a couple of different tour ideas for the YouTube channel and for the website. Um, one is virtually going back in time to 1947 to take a look at Haunted Los Angeles. Uh, back then, I will be going to haunted locations as they appeared in 1947. That's a video series. It'll be a two-part video series that I'm really excited about. Also, on a much lower tech way, I want to start telling stories using predominantly just Google Earth to hop into a location that has a, both a connection to filming locations. Uh, it doesn't have to be horror movies. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm de definitely going to do a lot of sitcom -y stuff. Uh, but then find some haunted locations nearby. So in case you happen to be in the area, and obviously a lot of that is going to have to do with Los Angeles, but hey, films are made all over the country, so I will have stuff from everywhere. Uh, definitely I'll be very Chicago-focused as well. Um, so this has been a long and very rambling look back at the last about year and a half of the whatsyourghoststory.com website. For everybody that has been checking it out, I really appreciate it. Thank you much. Comments are always so appreciated. Any kind of feedback to let me know that you're watching, that you're reading, that you have questions, that you are enjoying it, that you are wanting something more or something different, all that is welcome. So as always, the biggest question I have for you and the reason that this all exists is that I want to know, what's your ghost story?